<laughs> awesome. So, uh, hi everybody, Rob Murray and Mike Bernier from Intrigue here. We're doing uh, I Am In A Car with one of our amazing team members, Mike. That's me. That is you. And so thanks for, for doing this and, and, you know, putting your name in the hat to be a part of the show. If I get Nahas out of it, I'm good. Yeah, Nahas. So there's a quick <laughs> shout out for like best Thai food in Guelph. If you're ever looking for a good lunch, Naha is the bomb. And we're on our way there now. So I am in a car has a destination today. We're not just going to be rolling around back in the same <laughs> spot we started. We're going to get some lunch. So Mike, again, thanks for doing this. Uh, maybe you can just kind of give the, the audience a quick little kind of rundown in terms of you know, what you've been up to, where you kind of came from, and, you know, what you're doing uh, at Intrigue. Yeah, for sure. So, I uh, grew up in Aurora in the GTA, and went to the University of Guelph for uh, marketing management, and at the very last year, I was part of a applied community project where I got landed with these people called Intrigue Media. Um, from the minute I met Rob and Paul, I knew that I wanted to grow with these guys because they were just really, really fun people, and I, I just loved the vibe of the office when I went there. It was crazy. Like the the old house, 151 West Mount, I don't know if you guys have been there, but it is very, very eclectic. We'll see. Yeah, for sure. And uh, yeah, so I got in tight with them and got an intern doing web development, and um, after my internship, I got kept on and now I am a, a web developer here at Intrigue full time leading a team and we are making awesome websites. Yeah you are and it's been really amazing you know that kind of journey mm -hmm. um, we worked with Seabase at the University of Guelph for a project to understand how municipalities were engaging their citizens mm -hmm. through digital tools like social media and email and that kind of stuff yep. and Mike was a lead on the project and rocked the presentation uh, it was kind of like a, a little bit of a match made in heaven, I'd say. And Steve Barrett, <laughs> one of our mentors, was working with Mike, yeah. and he said, "You gotta, you gotta get Mike in your organization." So essentially, I have a rule that I live by, and it's whatever Steve says, I do. <laughs> so here, here we are, you know, a year and a half later, I guess. Almost two years. Almost two there, years. Yeah, yeah. Cr crazy. Two years. Yeah. Time flies when you're having fun. Oh, does it ever? So um, you know, maybe it's going back to that piece where you you were interning and then. You know, we, we had the discussion around bringing you on full time and, and really kind of getting involved with the organization. Uh, I remember we had a conversation around uh, before you left. I think you went on uh, a trip at the end of the summer. Yeah, to the Mediterranean, yeah. And then, you know, when you came back or even before you left, I'm not sure exactly what the timing was like, but there was some discussion around this idea that you didn't really see yourself working somewhere long term, mm -hmm. but then this opportunity kind of came up and you kind of made a switch and now it's been almost two years. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so maybe you can help people understand, like, what what was that kind of decision like and, and process like? Yeah, it's been really floated around the internet, and I think that millennials have this mindset that uh, you don't want to work at a place for a very long amount of time because you make more money by moving around and getting different jobs and negotiating your pay raise. Um, and I guess that was what. I had the mindset of as well. I was just like, okay, I'll get my experience here and then I'll start moving on. Maybe I'll do a bit of freelancing, but I'll grow in this web development here and then take these skills somewhere else. And then um, Rob told me one time when we were out for lunch, never have a plan B. Like winners don't have a plan B. You go full out for plan A. And I was like, you know what? My plan A is working at Intrigue because I love working here. Um, it's like just the people and like the growth that I've experienced in like year over year over year, it's been absolutely insane. So uh, I stuck with Intrigue and <laughs> went for my plan A. Awesome, man. Well, we're super stoked to have you. Yeah. Uh, I remember uh, about a year ago, I guess it would have been last May when you were celebrating your one year. Yeah. We were up in your office and I asked you at the end of the day, I think we cracked a beer. Yeah. And I said, you know, in the last 12 months, what's the biggest thing that's kind of stuck out? to you mm -hmm. and you mentioned you know your own personal growth mm -hmm. so can you give us a bit of insight in terms of what that journey has been like and kind of what has stuck with you in terms of you know your experience inside the organization yeah for sure um, something that uh, 
I noticed a lot when I got to Intrigue, and something that is like amazing for personal growth, is when I had a question for something like, hey, what do you want me to do for this, or what do you want me to do for that, uh, both Seth, my mentor coming up through Intrigue, and Rob and Paul were just like, I trust you, make your decision. And it's crazy that like, you go through life being told what to do by your teachers, by your professors, everything like that, and then just being able to make the decisions that you think are right and see how they come to light. And that just gets you into the mindset of being, like, of leading yourself. And it just, like, it, it does wonders for your initiative. Awesome. For being able to take this on yourself. And I think that that is the most important thing that you can do is having the initiative to grow yourself. That's awesome. I think one of the things that's kind of inherent with that idea is the potential for failure. Mm -hmm. and, and being in an environment where essentially failure is promoted yeah. and encouraged. Yeah. Because uh, you'll learn a lot more if you make a decision and it doesn't go the way you thought than you would if you never made the decision and kind of play it safe all the time. And I have failed a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So is there is there an example of maybe a failure that you know you experienced um, that was really hard to deal with but then when you came to the other side you just learned a ton and you were a better person for it? Yeah. Um, uh, part of my role at Intrigue has grown into a uh, migration suites so I, I would mi migrate people who are working in antiquated email systems into a new email system and we all know that email is the most important thing in the world for everybody because that is what businesses run on nowadays yeah we always say that if, if a website goes down it's a bad day but if email goes down the sky is falling <laughs> and I have made a couple of emails go down <laughs> um, and it was just part because um, I, I was reading a uh, the uh, Transforming Leaders the Sandler Way and like this one page that has stood out to me so much is that you will never be ready enough to make a decision or to put something into action you just have to do it and see what happens and th th that's what I had done with this uh, email transfer I had just done it and I saw what happened and it caused the email to go down and I was just flipping out because <laughs> like Rob said the sky was falling <laughs> uh so, well, I, I will never make that mistake again, but only because I was able to make that mistake. That's too cool. Yeah. So then this idea of uh, one of our values at Intrigue is internalize failure and, gr and, and learn from it. Mm -hmm. um, it really seems like you've embraced that idea and, and the idea of leading yourself and um, making your own decisions and mm -hmm. taking action, discover solutions, which is another value mm -hmm. that we have at Intrigue seems like those two things have kind of come hand in hand and, and helped you kind of get where you are. My God, have they ever. Have they ever. <laughs> so if there was one like, I don't know, maybe a mantra or is there something that you keep in your mind on a day-to-day -day basis to kind of keep you on track and keep you growing and keep you excelling? I always say a place for everything where everything's in its place, but that's just because I'm an extremely, extremely organized person, which does help me in my growth. But um, I'd say keep yourself busy, especially with things that interest you. Um, if you're just going between work and like just keeping yourself alive, you're not going to have fun with it, and you're not going to be wanting to grow. But if you're if you find stuff that you genuinely enjoy, it's just going to come naturally. So, like, can you give us an example of what that means to you? Yeah, for sure. Um, I bought a house, and I love home improvement. So, what I do to keep myself busy is learn how to improve my house and like it, it, it's crazy I'm not just going home and watching Netflix and watching my life go by I'm going home and I'm researching how to make my sump pump drain correctly because <laughs> my basement's flooded a couple times um, and, and especially for web design I, I, I taught myself how to do everything that I know or Seth helped me I guess um, but uh, in university when people were out drinking I was building my first shitty website <laughs> <laughs> So you, you have to find something that you like to do, that you want to do in your free time, and that lets you escape from work that you don't want to be doing. That's cool. So then um, one last piece then before we kind of stop and get some Naha, because it's the best Thai food in Guelph, and there's exactly. another shout out, and it looks like it's a little busy, which is not surprising. Um, 
when it comes to failing and, and internalizing failure and, and discovering solutions, taking action, discovering solutions, um, maybe you can give some people that might be thinking about, you know, getting into a, a, a work environment or maybe even considering working at Intrigue. Mm -hmm. um, what's the support network or culture been like when those mistakes have happened? Because I know that, like, you know, typically if, say, a client email goes down, mm -hmm. uh, some people might think that that could really put your job on the line mm -hmm. or, you know, you could get reprimanded mm -hmm. or something like that. So what's it been like for you in the experience of making those failures and learning from things and taking action, discovering solutions? 100% full support every single time. I've never been reprimanded for failing at all. Um, I've always been encouraged to try new things, even if the last thing I did completely didn't work. And it, like the support network at Intrigue has just been absolutely crazy. Like I, I'm never scared to fail anymore. Woo! Woo. It's crazy because when people join an organization, the idea of making their own decisions and and failing is like scary. Yeah. And so to hear, you know, it's been a, a big couple of years, mm -hmm. but you know, two years in, and now you know 100. percent you're 100 percent confident. You're 100 percent safe. You can make. You can jump off a cliff, mm -hmm. and you're gonna land somewhere soft. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's really interesting, you know, fail fast, fail forward. Mm -hmm. um, if you, you know, I always think about uh, the story of Thomas Edison and he was interviewed after he had failed inventing the light bulb 10,000 times. And the person said, how can you stay motivated when you failed 10,000 times? Mm -hmm. And his, his response was, I haven't failed 10,000 times. I've found 10,000 ways that don't work. And we got the, we got electricity out of it, <laughs> yeah. you know, like it's crazy, but that's what it takes to, to, to grow, to be better. And I think the coolest thing about, you know, our team and, and everybody that we have inside the organization is that we all are striving to be great at what we do. Mm -hmm. So when we make a mistake, we can hold our head up high and say, I'll do better yeah. in an honest, authentic way versus if we were trying to do like, you know, take shortcuts mm -hmm. and we messed up and we're trying to put our tail between our legs and maybe like not talk about it. Yeah. Um, that's just the, it's like the antithesis of how we would operate. So. So, you know, for anybody that's looking to, you know, join an organization, um, from my perspective, just to echo what you said is make sure you're going to get into a supportive environment where you know you can fail and you can be supported. And if you, you know, maybe can't find that or you're wanting to be in a place where you can grow like crazy, then maybe entry is a spot for you. It is. Sweet. Well, thanks, Mike. I'm looking forward for some Masaman curry. Oh, baby. Thanks, guys.